So I, I figured the best way to do this was maybe just give a quick overview. Um, like, and then just dive into the chapter and, and try to um, like set up and build the package from start to finish. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's, that will pretty much cover our, you know, our first learning objective of just getting a familiar with the workflow, developing a package. Um, we'll use the use this package a lot as well as dev tools. So we'll get familiar with that. Um, learn, uh, learn how to document and test functions. Um, We'll, we'll experiment with it a little bit and then uh, we'll use Git and GitHub as well. <clears throat> um, let's see. Okay, yeah, ask me if you need me to stop at all. Um, yeah, and before before I dive into this, I'll share in the chat. Um, so I attended our studio conference this year. Uh, I was lucky enough to go to the Building Tidy Tools um, workshop. It was a two day workshop and it was basically, uh, excuse me, it was basically a workshop over our packages. Um, so all the source materials are online here. I'll throw this in the chat. Oops. So this was like broken up into two days and like two different sessions. Um, if you had issues or like if you don't have Git or GitHub installed or linked to your RStudio account, it will show you how to do that. Um, and then there's the slides for like each day too. So it it's based off our packages and it's a helpful tool as well. So we'll, we don't have too much time or we don't have, you know, two days compared to uh, that workshop. So we'll just dive in and make like the bare bones minimum package. So the workshop is solidly on building packages, right? Yeah. Um, it was set up very similarly to the way this book is set up as well. Um, let's see. They went into, they went into a bit more detail besides our packages. They went into some, uh, further detail about like object oriented programming okay. as well uh but uh yeah if you have time afterwards this would be a good resource yeah. to check out yeah this is a good resource i'll go away and and instead of the package um in the book uh it, you create like a, a football package like a sports package so that, yeah, that was very useful. Um, so we'll just, we'll make, we'll do something similar, but it will be uh, just a very, very bare bones overview uh, to get started. We'll make sure that we have uh, dev tools. You can feel free to uh, do this along with me or 
uh, just follow along here. Uh, the book, oops. The book wants you to have uh, 2.4.5 or uh, the for the package version, so make sure that you have that. And if not, you can always go to um, your packages in RStudio and update it here, or install the packages and it will update it as well. Um, apologies for flipping back and forth. No, I mean, that's a good way to do this, all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this package is just gonna be like just a small toy package um, and it it's gonna be based off of like string R and um, regular expressions, but it's supposed to put the fun in regular expressions. You can look at the finished product here at Jenny Bryan's GitHub. And you can also look into the, um, what is it? Oh. Yeah, you can look into the commit history and see like how the package was actually put together like step by step. So to start, we'll use, um, I believe this is use this create package. The, so the one thing that I wish that the authors did in this book was namespace the functions because like I, I get confused. I'm not sure if it's dev tools or the use this package. And so putting that before each function just helps to like clear that up. Um, I'm not sure what you mean. So if you have dev tools loaded up, you can use any function within dev tools yes um oh. so create okay. like create package uh okay um mm -hmm. but by namespacing it and putting uh the package before the function it just clears up oh okay uh, oh, okay i see ambiguity yeah 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 that makes sense but I think the reason why is like they ask you to load the dev tools first yeah. and subsequently they can just be using the name of the functions. Yeah, and that's, um, yeah, I think that's perfectly fine. I, I'm just, uh, sometimes I get like unsure of which, which uh, library it's using. Um, so you can create it in the our studio session or in a project. Um, I'll check out what uh, working directory I'm in right now. But so this is interesting. If and what I like about this package. So we'll name it uh, reg excite. So it has these like, it puts up these barriers and asks you questions if you're trying to do something that may not be like the correct way to do it. Um, so here, when I tried this first, um, it said, Reg Excite is nested inside an existing 
working project, which is really a good idea. Uh, so ask if you want to create it anyway. Um, so I'll say no way. Instead, I'll give it its own uh, its own place. And then that doesn't um, that doesn't have that warning message. Uh, so a new window pops up with our newly what created. Oh, I can oh. see. Um, are in are in bar are in bar loaded. What is that? In your time. Yeah. So this is in my R profile. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, so this automatically, this is just like, um, and uh, like a custom option I I built into my R profile. Yeah, so I see it. Um, I get it. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, yeah, can I see it? Like this surprise. What is the meaning of why do we do you use this in your console? Um. This custom stuff, um, what is the essence of doing so? Uh, yeah, let me... <laughs> Yeah, because like I see you use web tools, test that and all these, you know, you separate the message. What what does the mean of this separation message? Um yeah, that's a good question. Uh I think it just automatically uploads DevTools and tests that into my environment. Um, okay. So I don't have to do that each time. Mm -hmm. um, okay. This this is a custom uh, function from one of my colleagues that um, he built that for his like our environment startup. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, cool. Never mind. I can link. I can link you to that. Mm -hmm. I'll just a quick side sidebar. Yeah, and. Uh, this person was in some of the past book clubs as well. Oh. Uh, but that uh, function is within this repo. Mm, okay. Okay. Um, cool. So it'll pop up with a new uh, a new session, most likely. Uh, it'll have a lot of uh, text as well. Um, what gets built, um, a lot of stuff in our build ignore file. Um, if it's in our studio and our project uh, dot user file, uh, git ignore, uh, that is helpful, especially if you use git. Uh, we'll be using the description um, file to create metadata. Uh, the R folder will contain all the uh, R files. And then uh, this is the file that makes the directory in our studio project. So it creates a bunch of files and it, it does that all by itself. So we'll uh, we'll load dev tools again. <clears throat> uh, the first thing you want to do um, is set up a git uh, repo as well.
So they'll just um, create a Git repo and then the message will be uh, initial commit. And so when I ask these questions, um, it's, it's helpful, it's useful because uh, a lot of times you might, might be doing, you might be R, R coding and uh, you might be doing it by habit and you don't really want to do uh, like a commit or something like that. So it'll have all three of these uh, options and then each time it changes too. So you have to like really pay attention. So you don't make a mistake. So I'll say uh, for uh, restart, is a restart of our studios required? Restart now. And then we'll say definitely. So now we have, have a Git tab project. Ooh. So we have a, uh, uh, what's new? Only the creation of a Git tree, which is hidden in most contexts, including the RStudio file browser. And I forgot where I saw this, but you can actually go in and see like the actual initial commit that you uh, that you built. Uh, that's somewhere in our studio. Um, yeah. I used to see it here as well. Maybe it has not committed. Oh, I wonder if I need to restart. You would see it here, maybe. Oh, this is where I opened it up and that was the initial commit on the uh, view history of previous commits for on the clock icon. Um, I'm actually going to, so since I have that set up, I'm going to skip down to um the use github and so in the prerequisites to that our studio workshop that i linked to mm -hmm. uh it shows you how to link your github to your r studio so if you have already done that you can use the use GitHub command, and it will create uh, a repo on your GitHub. So it opens up to uh, my GitHub account, and it's just the bare bones uh, project. Yeah. Okay. I I had a bit of trouble like linking my GitHub account to our studio. Um but once I went through those steps, it was like um that was that was helpful. Okay. Um I think mine I had already linked it with the GitHub, so I just pushed it and it worked. Okay, yeah, that's awesome. Uh yeah, once you have it set up, it's it's pretty simple just to use that uh, use mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Let's see. So I will go back. I was wondering, like, you know, maybe to create all that is an existing document, like, you know, all these tips for creating packages, just to have them like a picture, like, okay, this one, this one, because like they are step by step, you know, <laughs> but with time, well, one become like I, I'm familiar with everything. Yeah, definitely. Um, <clears throat> so I think, so the next, um, or I guess the next step, and then the steps after that, um, so basically we're just gonna build like a custom function, add it to our package, and then just go through the few steps of like documenting and testing. And then we'll, uh, we'll like create, we'll do a couple more things, but at that point, we'll basically have a package. Um, so we'll create a, a string split one function, makes it super easy. Um, it creates a function in our R folder, and then you can, you know, write your custom function here. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, I missed where the function was, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that the actual minimum function, uh, we save it, but in order to actually like use it and test it out, uh, we'll have to reload our package. Uh, so we'll use the load all command. Um, this chapter, uh, goes through shortcuts, a uh, really helpful shortcut is, at least on the Mac, it's Command Shift L. On Windows, I think it might be something else, but it will call the dev tools load all uh, function. And once you do that, you can uh, test it out. Yep. Oh, and I, I is the wrong uh, function. It's string split one. Oh, uh, okay. But it's yeah, it's very very similar to, to that one. Um, let's see what. So yeah, that's like the basic functionality of that. Um. Hadley notes that uh, that this function shouldn't be in your global environment. Um, if it is, you're using like this script-based workflow. Um, so that's that's not what we want to be doing with package-based development. Um, so in order to uh, clear that or backtrack, you can uh, clean out the global environment and restart R and then uh, load dev tools and load all um, to load load the function uh, and have it callable from the package. Oh yeah, so here's the, um, here are the shortcuts for load all. Um, and you can 
get that function from the um, build pane as well. But either Control Shift L or Command Shift L, that's that's helpful. Okay, cool. Um, I'm not sure if I'll do this every time we uh, finish this section, but um, the recommendation is uh, after like each step or after you know some some change in your package that you commit it. Um, mm -hmm. So personally, let's see. So you can do that within our studio here. I uh, think you should be able to. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm not as, uh, I haven't used this specifically in a while. Um, I actually have a, Get coming. Yeah, I I use this interface, uh, Get Kraken. Mm -hmm. So it'll show your um, it'll show your commits and then uh, your work in progress. You can check out. Um, Mm -hmm. You can check out the differences. Uh, make a uh, message and push. So because I don't use it often, the Git current, I prefer like terminal sometimes, but I have it as well. Do you do that in, do you do the terminal in RStudio or? No, not at um, RStudio. There is another terminal that I'm using called WAP. So like, uh, you know, um, I typically, uh, yeah, I still want to make a view in WAP. Initial time. It's normal, you know, but, uh, you know, it's like, uh, and have some, yeah, so. Oh, nice. Are, are you on uh, Windows, Mac, Linux? Mac. Oh, this is cool. for, This time is only for Mac. I'll I'll check that out. I'm. I have the I just have the um, built-in terminal, but that might be useful. Okay. Um. Yeah. So we added that. Cool. Cool. Let's see where we are now. Um, running, uh, our, our command check is, is definitely, um, I guess a lot of these are things and habits you need, you should include in your like package development life cycle and, uh, running checks is one, one part of that just to make sure there's like no errors or take care of any warnings that might pop up. Uh, so when we do that, uh, we should just have one. So we'll go through a lot of checks, um, output a lot of uh, text as well. Um, right now our package is, it's very minimal, so I, it's trying to take uh, too long. So yeah, the, the one warning is um, 
that our package does not have a license. Um, but there are no errors and uh, no notes as well. So this is, might be a little bit backwards, but they tell you to edit the description next. Um, so that's our description file of the package. Uh, it'll tell you uh, the title of it, uh, include a description, as well as uh, list the authors as well. And so this is where that um, that warning comes from is because we do not have a license included in our package. Um, they suggest to use the MIT license. And luckily enough for us, the super helpful use this package has a function just for this. And so you can use that function and it will add um, the MIT license or, or whatever other license um, thing. Yeah, you can, there's other ones as well. Apache, AGPL, but we are, we are sticking with the MIT license for uh, this package. And then we can go ahead and um, include this updated description. So yeah, updating the description, updating the license. And uh, yeah, we can see those changes there. We can even commit them. Yeah, the, the cool thing about this book and like especially this chapter is it pulls back the curtain on the package making process. And like when you look at other packages and you know read the description and help files, uh, this shows you like it's it's not that complicated to make one of your own. That's yeah, that's really cool. And what I like what I like about this book, and I'm looking forward to in our uh, book club as well. Yes, yeah, so part of that is the documentation in this. Um, like if you're looking up a package and. You, you want to know like how a function works. Uh, you look at the documentation. Um, yeah, I forget what, what the shortcut was for this. Shortcut for what? Or if there was a shortcut. So for what? In, inserting, um, uh, Roxygen skeleton. Like basically inserting. Um, oh, okay. I'm not sure. That should be, I think. Maybe if you go to X, yeah. Uh, I think it's. Uh, oh, yes. so. Shift command, shift control command. Control shift command R? Yes. Okay. 
I am, I'm just going to copy this though, make it and cheat. Oops, I copied everything. Okay. Okay, so you're not done yet. If uh, if you just do that, you also need to um, run the document command. So when we do that, uh, it builds that documentation. <clears throat> um, I still don't think we can look at it yet or, oh. Okay, so I thought we had to restart our, but it looks like that was built. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so you can preview it with a uh, question mark, function name. Uh, in addition to converting um, string splits, special comment, the call to document updates namespace file as well. Um, Okay, when we run uh, check again, it should now pass because we added the documentation. Perfect. All right, so we have a minimal a viable package now, and we can install it using the install command. Um, you can also go to the build tab and install it here, or shift command shift B as well. Now we have our Package installed and loaded. So we can um, restart R, load our package, and then do our function. And we have success. Um, another uh, great part, um, or another thing that I need to do, like more personally, is building uh, tests around your package to make sure that it works. Um, so all the functions you have, you must test them, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> theoretically, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think especially for, I'm, I'm not for certain, but I think if you do submit to CRAN, I want to say you do need tests built around your functions. Mm -hmm. Um, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> so we'll, We'll start that off by um, building our uh, test uh, test app folders and test folder uh, using the use test that, and then we can specifically build a test for our function. Uh, so basically, it's just checking if the input you give it 
is equal to the output that you expect. There's a lot of different um, functions within test that like expect equal um, should, so these should be the same um, in the test for this one is that multiplication works. Uh, for our instance, we're just gonna make sure that the input um, is an exact equal to uh, our output vector. So just a simple test doesn't have to be too complicated. Um, and we can test uh, all of our test functions with this, with just the test function. So our one passed and it's looking good. Mm -hmm. So my question, like if we have um, multiple functions, so everyone we must go, we have like 100 functions, we must test them all to make sure they pass, right? Yeah, and I believe maybe there is some ways you can I, test everything. I believe this, this uh, function test, if, if you have multiple. Yeah. Um, so let me. So say I keep that copy this over. This will run both, uh, this should run both tests. So now both, it shows both of them passed. Mm -hmm. So if you have, if you have like 50 or 100 tests, this will go through all of them. Um, and then you can figure out I, I forget what F, W, and S mean. Oh, fail, warning, or if you skip a test. Um, yeah, you can see which one uh, fails as well. Uh, cool, more. So a lot of this is in like our studio or um, keyboard shortcuts as well. Uh, let's see. So we have we have a few, or I guess we have a couple more. Um, we already went over use GitHub. Uh, I think the use package is uh, fairly important. So say you want to use someone else's package, um, like string R or ggplot or whatever in your own package, you want to use the use this um, use package function. So here we're like, all right, I'm going to use string R in this package. So we use that and it adds this to the imports in our description file. You can see that in here. So now that that will import with our package as well so that it can run. Um, let's see. So Hadley uh, rewrites this function and uses the string R uh, string split function instead. So we, we rewrote the function, uh, we renamed it as well. And uh, after reading this chapter, I found out you can uh, easily rename files. So instead of having string split one, no like spaces or anything, uh, we want it to match our function. So this rename files is, Pretty handy for that. Since it's open, uh, we can delete that. 
and then I believe we can do that for the test function as well. It's not serious. What's that? No, 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 no. Okay, not here. Oh. <clears throat> So when you rename the file, it will rename every other thing, even in your taste, everywhere it will rename it, right? If 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 what can you can you say that again, please? Yeah, I say like if you rename rename the file, um everywhere, even inside the test, it will go and rename your file there. Oh, um, The um, this is still the same, so I think you would have to go in and change your test. Ah, uh, okay. That's a that's a good point. Maybe you need to run the test again, check test again, so that it can override the previous one. Maybe. Oh. Oh, see, don't forget to update so, the test. Yeah, so um, so they went in and changed the uh, test files and added uh, more tests as well. Let me go ahead. I will. Now that we renamed this, I will. Just go ahead and copy and paste the new uh, function and description in here. Um, let's see. Yeah, so uh, they renamed the test function as well and edited it, uh, changed it inside as well. Okay, that's a very, uh, quick version of you know changing the name of files and editing as well okay before we take the new uh, function for a test drive we need to uh, we need a call to document uh, it converts our roxygen comments into proper our documentation and regenerates the namespace. So we'll document after that. Um, objects listed as exports, but not present in namespace string split one. Uh, so that always happens happens when you remove something from the namespace. Uh, we can load all again. And use our cool updated function. All right, so we used uh, we used GitHub. Um, if you were doing this for real, you'd probably want um, more commits in between each time instead of um, commenting on all of these changes. Uh, so we did that. And one last thing is just creating a readme file uh, so people understand um, yeah understand your package and and uh it's easier to comprehend than going into the files itself uh, so we'll use that use readme and it'll create one i think rmd is what we want So 
So it gives you like basic outline of a readme. Um, let's see, here's, here's the actual one. I'll copy this real quick. Maybe. There's probably an easier way to do this. All right, so they were super helpful and made a readme uh, for us already. We need to uh, build it. Okay. So now I think we can do a final check and install. These should, okay, that passed. Everything okay? <laughs> then install. Yep. Uh, and then let's restart R. Um, I think we should be able to knit this. Okay, perfect. There, yeah. and then that, this is what the, um, this is what the readme would actually look mm -hmm. like. Then. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, this is really helpful. I think what I would do, like, I have an idea to work on a project um, package, so I will be building it as we will. Uh, I will just start small, adding a lot, adding a bit um, till the end of the day. Yeah. Awesome. Um, mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, thank you. I, I think um I think just to close out yes um, like a helpful part of of building um, yeah. building packages writing packages is to like do small steps at a time mm -hmm. and like running those checks and tests yeah like periodically throughout your package development is a good habit to get into um as well as like just committing to uh get and get home yeah. okay cool yeah. yeah this is a good overview and um i was happy to present yeah thank you happy and I, it's really helpful i will go over through the notes you share in the r studio conf um this year um, yeah, that's a good and wonderful resource. And thank you for that as well. Um, so I think we are already on time today. So we see you next, um, I think, um, the new year, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, three weeks from now. Yeah, three weeks from now. Okay. So thank you very much, Revin. And uh, we see you in three weeks' time. All right. Just see you in the bye. new year. Yeah, see you in the new year. Bye.